Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Quick Snippets, where today we're going to take a quick look at a verse in the Bible, and we're going to try to understand what God meant by that which God said. If you would, please open your Bibles. Let's go to the New Testament to Philippians. Philippians chapter 1, and we're going to take a look at verse 29. Philippians 1, verse 29. Let me read it, and then let's talk about it. This is the Apostle Paul writing to Christians in the church in Philippi, and he said to them, For to you, it has been granted for Christ's sake, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake. What exactly was Paul saying there? Well, the word I want you to underline is the word granted. In the Greek, the word is ek hadeste. Within that word, ek hadeste, we have the word hades or charis as we anglicize it, which means grace. A gift given. Paul said, to the Christians in the church of Philippi. For to you, it has been ekhariste, graced to you for Christ's sake, not only to believe in him. Do you agree? That the ability to believe in Christ as Lord and Savior is a gift of God's what? Grace, charis. Paul says, for to you, Christian, it has been graced for Christ's sake, not only to believe in him for salvation, but also what? To suffer for his sake. Do you agree that salvation is a gift from God? Yeah. How about suffering? Oh, you don't want to answer that one, do you? Look at the verse. Look at the verse. <laughs> For to you, Christian, it has been gifted, graced, Granted, for Christ's sake, not only to believe in him, salvation, but also to suffer for his name and his glory. Oh, by the way, Paul was writing this letter during his first Roman imprisonment. Boy, up to this point, Paul in his ministry, oh, did he ever suffer for Christ? But Paul understood, just like salvation was a gift of grace, suffering for Christ was a gift of grace. Again, ek. It's a gift. Now, that right there should just completely blow up that false teaching that's just rampant in the church today that, that teaches God wants you to be always healthy and always wealthy. Is that what Scripture says? No, no. Scripture says, just like salvation is a gift of charis, grace, so is suffering. It's not a curse. It's a gift. That's what Scripture says, right? 
And again, Paul was living that suffering. He was living that gift of grace. Not only his salvation in Christ, but also his suffering for Christ. Yet today in the modern church, this idea of suffering for Christ? No, 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 no. If people do suffer for Christ, they say, well, it's because they don't have enough faith or, you know, they're living in sin and blah, 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 blah. Now, yes, God does discipline his children, okay, if they are living in sin. But God also grants to his children the gift of suffering. even if they're not living in sin, for his glory. You see, we like part of that verse, don't we? Yeah, salvation is a gift of grace. Love that. All for God's glory. Love that. But what about suffering is a gift of grace? All for God's glory. And by the way, guys, it's not like I like to suffer either. <laughs> no. But we have to understand that salvation and suffering are both gifts given by God for the glory of God. That's why Paul said, just hop over to Colossians Chapter 1, verse 24, Paul said, Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, talking to the Christians in Colossae. And in my flesh, I do my share on behalf of his body, which is the church, his body, Christ church, in filling up what is lacking in Christ's afflictions. What was Paul saying there? Paul understood that suffering, like salvation, was a chadis from God. Paul said, and again, by the way, the letter to the Colossians, Paul also wrote that during his first Roman imprisonment, just like he wrote Philippians. Paul said, I rejoice in my sufferings for Christ which is for the sake of the church of Christ and the glory of Christ. And Paul said, I am filling up what is lacking in Christ's afflictions. He was not saying that Christ's suffering was inadequate. No, what he was simply saying was this. Had Christ still been on earth during that time, what do you think the people would have continued to do to the Christ? Persecute him? Mock him, ridicule him, right? But at this point, Christ was no longer on earth. He had already ascended to heaven. So Paul said, while I'm here on earth, and as I am a minister for the gospel of Christ, I'll take the hits that were meant for Christ. I'll take the hits that Christ would have been taking had he still been here taken, had he still been here on earth. I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I do my share on behalf of his body, which is the church, in filling up what is lacking in Christ's afflictions. Paul said, It is my honor, it is my privilege to take hits for Christ from man, especially because Paul understood the hits Christ took for Paul from God. Back to Philippians. Chapter 1, verse 29, Paul said, For to you, Christian." It has been granted, ek chadiste, gifted, graced, for Christ's sake, for his honor and glory, not only to believe in him for salvation, but also to suffer 
for his sake. Christian, bring glory to Christ. Christ, the one who has gifted you with the gift of salvation, and Christ, who has also gifted you with the gift of suffering for his name. Bring glory to him. He is worthy. And one day, when you're standing with him in glory, there will no longer be any suffering. Amen.